All right, welcome to the Microsoft Stand Up. It is October, November 4th. Uh, so, how's everybody doing? I feel like I should be standing. I'm standing. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we, we, sh we should be working at the standing desks, right? I am, uh, actually, so I should be standing. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We'll, we'll do a quick uh, go around and uh, see how people are doing. And um, uh, and then at the end, we can check in on, on any uh, outstanding issues. So we'll start with uh, Gez, since I know it's nice and early for him there. Uh, no, it's getting getting to be a very nice time, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yesterday was mostly um, uh, merging community PRs and, and helping people <laughs> for us. <laughs> um, Jumping in the elevator. <laughs> um, yes, there was merging community PRs, and uh, and particularly with um, Lingua Franca, there's a whole bunch of um, of uh, new stuff that's been unlocked um, now that the refactor is complete. Um, so helping people to work through uh, um, the, just the thinking around some of the detail in there, like you know. Yeah, how things should run. Um, uh, I was also doing a bit of um, build recipe stuff. Um, run into a weird, weird issue with the <coughs> preloading um, PR, but doesn't doesn't really matter that much. Um, today, I want to get back to uh, um, finishing off the the default files in the in the dot github repo um and uh hopefully we'll um should be able to finish the uh the ticket around running simultaneous point comp tests so um uh, i've got an idea of that i just need to implement it and try it so um i'll do that today and then whatever else i get to <laughs> Okay, so how would you uh, uh, summarize the lingua franca process? Is it going is it going well? Are you having any hangups? Is it uh, is it more or less complete? Uh, yeah, so we've re we've released version we've now released version zero point three point one because um, caught some caught some bugs in the in the dot o version. Um, the the only remaining well, so there's there's now going to be a whole bunch more development. So there's already you know plans for dot three dot two and and dot o dot four, <laughs> the next major release. And um, but in terms of getting it into core, uh, there we already did a, a test um, integration. So I'm just going to leave the the um, packaging that up into a into a, a final PR into Microsoft Core. Um, I think Chance is going to work on that, so I just I'm just going to give him a few days um, to do that, and then it will be in core. And then I think once once we get that into Microsoft Core, I think it's worth doing a, a release of Microsoft Core as well, because there's been a lot of a lot of stuff added since um, since 2008. Okay, sounds good. But yeah, no hangups. Great. Um, yeah, at some point I'll, we'll want to do a check-in here. I, I'd like to see the Lingua Franca roadmap, and uh, and talk about you know what are what are the community's plans for that, um, and uh, you know maybe get that onto our roadmap as well. Um, all right, so uh, Ken, let's uh, check in with you. Yeah, just remind me after this meeting when we when we hang up or whatever. I got a couple of questions on the upcoming trip about the website and stuff, but. Uh, Anyway, yeah, so I, uh, I've been working on this build, the QT image build. It's not coming along well at all. Um, as I mentioned, it would be done by today if I didn't have any unforeseen circumstances. Unforeseen circumstances were hit. Um, I followed Ake's instructions uh, for rebuilding the tar. It didn't work. I went back and forth with him, exchanged emails, and he's not sure what it is. And it's not his job to figure it out. So that's where I'm at. Um, I'm still working on that as we speak. I am having Wi-Fi setup issues, just so you guys know, on both images, Kivi and QT. 
<clears throat> I have I have had <clears throat> with all the images I've burned, and it's probably about ten for each. I have had it come up and work out of the box once, and nine times out of ten it doesn't. So you know that's problematic. I think moving forward, but maybe it's just my Wi-Fi here. I have no idea. Um, so anyway, um, I also helped Derek today. He uh, installed the monkey patch on his Kivi image for the hardware. You can ask him how that went or if it's working or not. And that's where I'm at, what I've been doing, and what I'm working on. OK, thanks, Ken. Uh, well, let's go over to Derek then, since you uh, brought up his name. Hey, Derek. Hey, guys. Hey, um, yeah, so as Ken mentioned, I've got a almost working um, SJ240 with the Rev3, the SJ201 in there. Um, I have not received the new batch from Kevin yet. They uh, well, they may have arrived this afternoon at the office, but I've been at home most this afternoon, so they should be coming in today. Um, and now uh, that Ken can I work on this, we have a USB drive that I can use as a test um, to just plug in and and make sure everything's working well. Um, but I was able to do a little bit of just real quick uh, test stuff now that we've got, um, I was, I'm, I'm bringing up the Kivi uh, build and I can use the mic as an input and um, did a little bit of testing and from far distances, it seems to work pretty well. And I don't have audio playback going. I'm not sure there's a bug there that needs to get fixed. Um, but audio does work on the hardware uh, through the test stuff that uh, Ken provided. So no audio is working. Just need to get it flipped on on, on the Kivi build. Something's not, not hooked up right there. <clears throat> that might have to do with the other Mark II skill that's in there. We have two Mark II skills. Well, I have no idea. And the, old, the other one, uh, I might have actually changed it on my code line down here or on the Kivi images I was working with because it tries to send out the volume commands itself as well using I2C and God knows what that's doing. So um, it could be that. Uh, it could be a variety of things. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at it. But sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, but, so it, yeah. but the hardware works. Yeah. It's and not. The hardware yeah. Work. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's all good. I'm not. I'm not concerned about it too much. We just, uh, and I don't know that I'm going to push on it too much right now. But yeah, um, it'll it'll be cool to to get it to actually to work. Um, but you know, like I said, I can I'm I'm interacting with it. I'm seeing uh, the responses. You know, you ask the weather, the you know the icons pop up and everything. I'm just not getting the audio playback, and you're seeing it in the CLI. So. Um, <clears throat> Okay, yeah, and then so uh, you can uh, get with Ken about that after the meeting, and let's let's get that let's get that resolved. So, the sooner we all have we have an image that we can pass around to people, and, and we actually know how to replicate that, you know, the, the better we can get to iterating on improving things. Okay, well, all right then. Um, yeah, and then so the other thing I could do, uh, which would be kind of a quick way to get to an image, is I um, once we have this working. I can just strip out my account information um, from this image and then just um, duplicate this drive as an image uh, instead of you know building a proper image. And that should work. So uh, yeah, if we can get that figured out, then yeah, I'll create that tonight. <clears throat> okay, um, cool. So yeah, other than that, I've been uh, there's several things that as I've been working with the Mark to today, I've noticed on the assembly that I was like, oh, I got to fix some of this stuff. Um, so I've, I've been making a few changes in the CAD to, to fix some of these, these troublesome things I keep finding. Little tweaks here and there. Um, the way the, the mic board mates up is, is a little problematic. Um, <clears throat> or the, the top part that the mic attaches to. Um, Okay, so tomorrow I will. I didn't really get to put put together all the the stuff I need to bring for the summit, so that got kind of pushed to tomorrow. So that's probably going to take up a a good chunk of the day. That's it for me. Okay, great. Um, just to mix things up, I won't go last. I'll just go now. 
Um, I, uh, I talked with Kevin a little bit, uh, rather exchanged some uh, messages this morning. Um, we didn't have uh, the, the review of the uh, Rev4201 this morning as we planned because uh, it turned out he had a little bit more work to do uh, in terms of layout and um, you know fixing bugs. So he's, uh, he's doing that today and we're gonna meet in uh, tomorrow morning on that. Um, I wanna get those shipped out uh, to a PCBA before we leave uh, for the summit. Um, and uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to do that by Friday. Um, and then I spent uh, some of that time uh, going over our JIRA tickets and uh, just doing a little bit of cleanup and organizing and putting in more tickets for all the little bits and pieces that we need to do to, uh, you know, to get the, the Mark II uh, dev kits shipped. Um, and so I've got a, a little bit of a timeline as well um, on uh, you know a rough timeline on what we need to do to get this this shipped. So we need to we still need to qualify a PCBA factory. That's kind of a hang up right now because um, we don't actually have one that we know can do double double sided boards in a timely fashion accurately. Um, and um, and then we've got to work on some of the uh, the other long lead time stuff like you know ordering parts uh, and uh, designing the packaging. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna want to get with Derek in the next couple of days on that stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. So well, uh, last time I spoke with Kevin, I asked him to consider putting jumpers on the SJ201s for selecting whether we go over USB or whether we go over the old approach like GPIO or whatever. And in the last email I got from him, I think I saw it this morning. It wasn't clear to me because when he says jumpers, sometimes he means, well, pull out your soldering iron and, and jumper this. Did he actually put post jumpers on the SJ201 to, so we can configure that or did I misread that? Uh, there's a lot fewer configuration options on the next rev, um, but I will add that to my checklist. Um, so the, next, the, the rev four is, is, is not, does not have the same options that we had before because a lot of these iterations that we were doing in the past, we were, we were, weren't certain how the chips would perform or how the software would work. So we put a couple different options on there to just to test out like, okay, will this thing work? And if it doesn't, then we've got a fallback way to make it work. Now that we've kind of sorted all that out, we don't really need all those jumpers, right? So um, there may still be a few left, but I'll make sure that they're easy to configure uh, if they are there. All right, so, so the point is we're not going to put post jumpers on there and say, use GPIO for the switches versus use the XMOS USB? Uh, I'll look into it, um, okay. but yeah. Um, okay, uh, Chris Fair. Yeah, so uh, last night I upgraded the Jenkins server to beast mode. Um, this is now a big honking machine. Uh, that seemed to go pretty smoothly. Um, <clears throat> I've run several jobs on it today without issues, so I think we're, we're, we're good there. Um, and while I was in my Jenkins mindset, I upgraded the Jenkins file um, in Selene uh, to make sure that when the build is successful, um, we delete the Docker images it created. So um, that way we don't have Docker image cruft, at least not in Selenium. If this works out well, then we can apply it to other Jenkins files, but I wanted to do it in one place first and see how that is. Um, Ken and Chris, you have the pull request. Um, it's just a Jenkins file, a few lines of code. Um, so I can merge that in. Uh, so that'll help part of the reason we needed a bigger box anyway, but uh, so that was this morning, getting that working. Um, this afternoon, I've been working on the uh, designation logic. I have a query written. Um, it seems to work pretty well on uh, selecting up the uh, things to look at for designations. Now I just need to write the logic to go through the query results and um, yeah, determine whether or not I want to add some new des designations or not. OK. That's it. So tomorrow, I'll continue to work on on this script. Now, at the end of that Jenkins job, it um, shoves that image up into an S3 bucket. 
Have you actually downloaded the image file from there, burned it, and verified it works? This is Cellini. This does not Cellini. This doesn't have anything to do with S3. No, the, I'm saying, okay. So you didn't modify the um, the Jenkins job for the build. For, uh, the I program. modified the Jenkins job for the Cellini backend CI process. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so, Chris. Oh, and you... one more th one more point on that sure. is that the the images will stick around if the job fails. That way, if you want to do troubleshooting, the images will still be there. I only delete them if the job is successful, because in theory, if it worked, you don't need to go back and um, you know run things against the Docker image to see what fails. <laughs> but you haven't tested the QT build job at all with this new system, correct? I thought I. Miss, I, I must have misinterpreted what I saw this morning. Yeah, I did not test. I, the tests I've run are of the Cellini code. Okay. Which is what I've been working on recently. I've, that's, those are the only tests I know that I've run on the new box. Others may have run or been kicked off, um, you know, but I, there's, I haven't been paying attention to that. Uh, so, but this new box will be the same box that runs the uh, the builds for making images and that sort of thing? Correct. Theoretically, theoretically, they'll be used for lots of different, you know, Jenkins jobs, right? Okay. Um, and so, but that's, so that's a universal cleanup step that you, you've you added, correct? Well, the cleanup step is within, is within the Jenkins file and Jenkins files are per repository. Hmm. Okay. So right now I added it to Cellini so that Cellini to make, just to make sure that my idea worked. And it is working. Um, so we can go, um, once this is merged, we can go to other Jenkins files and other repositories. Not all repositories have them right now. Um, but we can go to other Jenkins files and other repositories and do the same thing. Got it. Like, OK, so we can't expect to see especially. any differences until we explicitly say that we're going to make them. OK. Yeah. Cool. But it does It does clean up. Like, if things are, are not being used, the the pruning should clean up completely abandoned stuff from any of the jobs, right? Uh, the, the pruning cleans up like dangling things like that. So pruning, uh, I yeah. did a lot of research on this today, actually. <laughs> um, the container prune will blow away any containers that are stopped. The image prune um, will not actually delete containers um, unless you use um, a dash A flag, which we weren't using. It deletes, um, what it does is it cleans up um, images that are um, like orphan images. Um, so we weren't getting, that. that's the, That's what we were missing. Because right now, a lot of the Docker files do have an image prune command on there, but it's not written um, well. But, but it's written fine. It's not written to do what we really intentionally wanted it to do, which was to clean up the images when we were done. <laughs> And my understanding is that all of our, I'm fairly sure all of our jobs create their Docker containers on the fly, either from a Docker file or from Docker Hub. So there shouldn't be any need for a Docker image to exist or a Docker container to exist there for it to use, because it should, each job should create that. Um, that the right? only images that might need to be there, like for example, I have the Selene database, um, as from Postgres 10. So I guess that could be pulled down from the, yeah. So nothing has to be there. The, the only thing I delete, um, like in the Cellini job, I just delete the the Docker images that Cellini generated. Um, so I didn't delete the Postgres 10 image, for example, or the Redis image that it uses to, to build things from. Um, I didn't see a reason to do that because I reuse those all the time. Um, I just delete the, the, the images that are generated by that job. Okay, guys, looks like he's got some side eye going on there. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I just want to make sure because, like, you know, the, like, would those containers then be stopped? And so, if they're stopped, would they get cleaned up by the prune? But if you've already run it and the Cellini stuff isn't breaking, then that is clearly not the case. Yeah, I've run it a couple times. Yeah. It seems to be working fine. So. All right. Well, it sounds like there is a question there on how, what the process is for preserving those dockers that you're basically using as a resource and and not aren't generated as part of our our 
test script, right? Yeah, those are those right now. I do not touch as part of this change. They, they basically they they're pulled the first time and they're just sitting there, um, so we don't have to pull them every time from the uh, from Docker Hub. Um, we can. There's not that many of them. I think there's a Postgres. There's a Redis. Um, there's uh, there's the one for the um, for the Microsoft device stuff. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is just making sure that we we have a, a well documented difference between these things, which are sort of static resources that get used by tests that themselves, you know, get created on the fly and then blown away, uh, and um, and those tests themselves. You know, like if there's some kind of global flag that blows away Docker containers that aren't in use, we want to what is it that's keeping those from getting deleted versus other things? We don't have to answer the question now. I just want to make sure the process is, is documented well somewhere so that um, you know people coming in to, to play with things or modify things later on you know, know, know how we got to where we are. Um, so I have a question on the, um, the tagging system. Uh, do you think you're going to be able to get to the, uh, well, um, after your last comments, I put in a, um, an iteration zero, right? The uh, the, the the slightly more uh, advanced uh, version uh, of you know the the basically no logic version. Um, the will you be able to get that done in time for us to use it? Uh, you know, basically by Friday. Is that something you think you'll get done? Um, you mean like in production? Is that what we're talking about? Well, I mean, yeah, at least into test, right? Uh, okay, I'll have to see what is in iteration zero. Okay. If it includes designations, then uh, probably. Okay. It was yeah. um, it was just what you had discussed. You and I had discussed in the and you know through the comments you wanted a, a even a simpler version than the iteration one. So I went through and I spec'd that out real quick. Okay, I'll look through and see. I okay. I, I should be able to have that done by Friday. Okay. I mean, slight unseen. Most of what yeah. we talked about is already done. Okay. So. Great. Um, all right, so that just leaves us with Josh. Preparing for all you guys to roll in here for Hawaii, printing up 3D printed models of all. Um, and thank you for corresponding with our good friends at the uh, update provider. And uh, I think that's the sum total of the progress that I've made. Oh, unboxing many packages that Derek has mailed us and getting this place ready. So. And then probably the most obvious, like hitting refresh on the uh, national news uh, over and over and over again, like a rat addicted to cocaine. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Well, um, I know that uh, you and Chris have been doing a ton of work and getting the, the place and logistics set up for us to all arrive next week. So, um, so yeah, I know that's that's been a big uh, a big uh, a big lift as well. So, um, okay. So. Um, Got some follow-up items here. Uh, are there anything anything else that we should talk about uh, as a group? No, I just asked some questions once we hang up on the uh, website, yeah. the, the travel website. Non, non development uh, questions, yeah. No, okay. No, no. Um, all right, great. Well, then I'll go ahead and we'll we'll call this for today, uh, and we'll talk again tomorrow. <laughs>